what modern science knows about dreams is extremely limited. We can boil it down to dreams occur because of a chemical process in the brain during a cer certain state of consciousness, the sleep state, whereupon we hit a REM state, rapid eye movement, and by this state we can tell that the brain is active and the brain is dreaming. The brain dreams through chemicals. It seems like my whole life I've always put uh, great importance on dreams. I did have sleep paralysis for 19 years uh, weekly and sometimes a lot more often than that. Sleep paralysis is a state between the waking world and your astral world and apparently there were some issues with me getting in and out of my body in this space-time I experienced something uh, very f frightening very very frightening and so sleep paralysis is an interesting subject if you want to look that up I'll do a video on it one day uh, but that really gave me a what did you dream last night what, what was going on in your dreams I, I always knew that there was another world. Let's go back to the time of Freud. Freud was a great pioneer in the realm of dreams. Freud said that dreams were more than just uh, a, a chemical. He said that there were meanings in the dreams and if we look at them and if we analyze them in a specific way then we'll be able to derive meaning from the dream. That's about as far as he took it. That was his big key gnosis. Dreams may mean something more than just pictures in your head while you're sleeping. His student Carl Jung uh, came around at this time and at this time we were in the industrial age so people were looking more at logic and not so much at religion there was a great upsurge in spirituality uh, Eastern thought their spiritualists come from this time period Houdini comes from this time period and so Jung is in this renaissance so to speak of logic so I do understand that that his culture really did color his more mystical side into uh, a more logical side. Jung began breaking away from the Freudian thought when he began studying uh, deeper meanings of dreams and the subconscious and his studies took him to India where he learned about Buddhism and Hinduism and all he had to do was to read these ancient texts to get a map of the mind, which I think is what he was looking for. He felt like there must be something extra going on as his studies progressed. He saw beyond the logic, but he was very well aware that not many other people did. So he, I feel he wanted to explain it in a way to where people could understand it as a concept in a logical, so their brain could get it, so their mind could conceive of it so that it might lead to a belief you know later on. My favorite story is with when Young was with a client she was expressing a dream that she had had the night before and within the dream the major symbol was the scarab which usually come from Egypt and they're a sign of life, regeneration, rebirth. It's like the dung beetle which um, has a lot to do with the death and rebirth process that you need to shed your skin so to speak and able to allow for the new and as she's telling him about this dream he's looking out the window of his office and he sees a scarab which is not indigenous to his area at all whatsoever and he's quite amazed and shocked and surprised by this and it, it takes a hold of him He's like, oh my goodness, what was that? That doesn't fit into our Freudian logic. So I really think that was just 
one of the occurrences, I'm sure it occurred to him so many times that he could no longer ignore, ignore it. I'm sure it was, you know, something that haunted him. And he came up later with the concept of synchronicity. Now understand, all he did was give it a name and explain it in new terms. These concepts have as far as I know, always been around because they're universal concepts. So Jung was taking the spiritual, mystical, universal and putting it into this very small framework um, so that he could enlighten his peers. Through Jung's research of dreams and research of other forms of spirituality and mysticism and philosophy, he came up with a very nice framework for the time period. and. Even today, many people think Jung is the fringe. That's, that's where the cutoff point is. If you believe anything deeper than that, then you must be nuts because Jung is out there, man. And they don't really teach Jung much in college even. It's still a Freudian system. Yet, when you get into spirituality, you're going to run across Jung quotes in almost every book you buy because he's put it in a language that the Western mind can understand and grasp. Synchronicity is an amazing New Age concept that is so popular today that I hear about it from most of my clients. Most, you know, during most readings, there's a, oh my gosh, that's a synchronicity. And uh, it's normal, honestly. And I don't know how Jung got away without speaking about it, you know, long before. I have not had the privilege of reading the Red Book yet, so I understand that Jung may have gotten a lot of knowledge in his early years and just kind of let out what he felt he could let out in society at that time. It seems like he was very responsible, not wanting to go beyond where people were comfortable. He was very conscious of the world he was living in.